there are so many fruit and vegetables that we can grow at home that at some point we need to make a decision about which ones we're going to harvest and eat fresh and which ones we're going to store and how we're going to store them. So today I'm going to tell you about five vegetables that I like to freeze from the garden plus one bonus food and also one that I really don't ever recommend for freezing. Mr J and I rarely eat raw tomatoes. Very occasionally we'll have them in a salad or add them to a sandwich, but mostly if I'm gonna grow tomatoes, I grow them for use during the winter. So I harvest them and I freeze them and I use a flat metal tray. And if they're very small, I put them whole on the tray. And if they're large, I cut them into halves or into quarters, lay them out onto the tray put them in the freezer and then once they're frozen you can take them off the tray and put them into a bag which means during the winter I have access to that super fresh super lovely tomato flavour and you can just make sauces from them add them to dishes once they're defrosted they're a lot mushier than they would be fresh but they are still so very lovely and if you don't like tomato skins they come off really easy once they're defrosted or of course you could blanch your tomatoes cool them and peel the skins off them before you freeze them once we've eaten most of our freshly harvested potatoes i turn to other things to provide us with that starchy cozy comforting and filling feeling in our food through the late autumn and the rest of the winter. What I usually turn to are beans. So not the beautiful roses here, but the beans growing up these poles. And these are my favorite variety of runner bean. They're called Greek Gigantes and you don't have to harvest them a bit at a time. They're much less work than regular runner beans. You leave the pods uh, in situ until they've just started turning yellow and then you can harvest them all at once. Take the beans out of the middle and then I either blanch them or I cook them completely uh, and cool them down rapidly and freeze them. I make sure I label containers so I know whether they're blanched or completely cooked. And then they're really easy to add to meals and they taste of buttery, creamy, really scrummy mashed potato. Now I quite often get asked uh, where you buy them and we got, uh, in the UK you can get them from real seeds and if you can't find them uh, in your seed supplier in your country, the only thing I can suggest is that you go to a supermarket that sells organic foods and you buy them uh, as dried beans for cooking. Make sure they are organic so they haven't had anything sprayed on them that would stop them from growing. Um, but then you should find that the dried beans you can sow next year uh, and they will grow away. And the next veg that I really like to freeze is sweet corn. And I've just planted it out in this bed just yesterday. So I'm still deciding uh, what to plant amongst it, but sweet corn is one of those doers in my garden. It grows nicely, it provides some shade, and that means where those tall plants cast their shadows on this side of the bed, I can grow lettuces and cabbages and other veg that really struggle when it's too hot. I harvest sweet corn in batches, and what I do is I put the hot water on in a pan before I come out to harvest so I can get the sweet corn cobs into the water as quickly as possible and preserve all that lovely sweetness. So I cook my sweet corn in boiling water and then get it under cold water really quickly to cool it down and stop it cooking anymore. And then for some of the corn on the cobs, I cut them in half so I have two pieces this sort of size and freeze them like that. And with others, I cut all the kernels off the cob and then I have the sweet corn in individual pieces, the kernels, and that makes it really easy for me to add them to winter dishes throughout the rest of the year. Every year I try to grow between six and ten red cabbages. And this is a variety called Red Acre, but all red cabbages work pretty much in the same way. And I harvest these a few at a time, maybe three or four. This is fantastic. I am so pleased with this red cabbage. Let's take the outer leaves off. And they will go to the ducks.
And that is a really good size. That's about um, eight, eight inches across at least. This is going to give us plenty of braised red cabbage for the winter. I have harvested 10 before, but that's just way too much work. So I harvest two or three at a time and I prepare them by removing the outer leaves, shredding them really finely, and then I slowly braise them with red wine and apple and sultanas and then some warming spices like cinnamon and nutmeg. And when they're all cooked, I allow the cabbage to cool and then I freeze it in portion sizes. So two people portions because there's two of us in the family. And the next is beetroot. And to tell you how much I like them, uh, I'm gonna read you a short passage from uh, my latest book. Uh, it's called The Seasoned Gardener and it's a celebration of the abundance of our gardens. And it gives you an idea of the things that I do with the different things that I grow. And there are a few stories in here and lots and lots of information about growing vegetables and storing them. Now it's not a how-to book, but it is packed with hints and tips. So here we go, beetroot. I cannot sing the praises of the humble beetroot enough. The purple slices of eye-watery, vinegary vegetables of my childhood memories have been replaced by sweet, earthy flavours in a variety of colours that please the eye as much as the palate. Beet seeds sown under cover in late winter and early spring can provide baby leaves of salads. I sow beetroot at regular intervals throughout the year from March to October and even in November in a mild autumn for a leaf crop I sow direct into a raised bed or the ground. And for beets, I multi-sow in modules early in the year and then direct multi-sow once the soil has warmed sufficiently for the seeds to germinate regularly. Multi-sowing is easy. It simply requires you to sow two or more seeds in an area together. And for beetroot, I usually sow three or four seeds together. I used to associate beetroot with the summer months, salads and pickles, but a few years ago, I discovered the joy of slow cooked beetroot, either roasted with a variety of other vegetables or slow fried over a low temperature, which gives the beetroot the texture of a good steak. Well, not exactly, but not a bad second option. My new book was written to encourage and inspire you to get out into the garden and grow what you like and to enjoy it and savour every moment of it. It's available on my website, bythefarm.com, on Amazon Worldwide, and also at all good bookstores. And so beetroot is a really valuable one for us. And increasingly, I grow it less and less as a summer vegetable and more and more for the winter harvest. So I harvest them, I pre-cook them and I freeze them. And then in the winter when I want to use them, I can just grab a few out of the freezer and toss them straight into a hot roasting tin. And because they're already cooked, all you're doing is thawing them and then giving them a lovely crunchy, kind of caramelised outside. They're really lovely. And then my other recommendation for food to freeze from your garden is soft fruit. I, hello bees. <laughs> I harvest and freeze as many soft fruits. So that's strawberries, raspberries, all the different types of currants and gooseberries, and even some stone fruits when I've removed the stone. These fruits can be really expensive to buy in the store. And what could be better on a winter's morning than waking up and putting some homegrown fruit on your porridge. And the vegetable that I don't recommend freezing, well, is mange too. Now these are actually peas and they'll probably never get as far as the freezer because I'll eat them on my journeys to and from the garden. But I have in the past frozen mange too, or snap peas or snow peas. So these are the ones that where you can eat the whole pod and not have to open them out and take the peas out of them. And I find when I freeze them, they get a really tough and unpleasant texture once they're defrosted. And so for that reason, I've stopped freezing them because I keep finding bags of mange too or snow peas in the freezer from years ago untouched and I can't face eating them because I just don't like the texture and actually I don't think the taste is as nice either. So here I am back in the kitchen, a quick look in the freezer. Here are uh, some of the beans as I've used masses of those already this year. 
Here's a bag of tomatoes. These were mostly a yellow skin variety. I think we've eaten <laughs> all the red ones already. Thankfully, I still have masses of fruit, so these are raspberries. And if it looks like we're gonna have a bumper crop in the garden this year, then I'll harvest those and this will become wine and jam. These are black currants. I particularly like these on yogurt, uh, but also in cheesecake. I don't have any homegrown sweet corn left because I've used all of that. And unfortunately, I also don't have any red cabbage to show you because we've enjoyed all of that too. So what would be your five absolutely essential veg to grow for your freezer? What wouldn't you grow? And please do share your thoughts and ideas of what you would choose to freeze in the comments section below.